Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indie Zor Education. Um, continue talking about expectation of random variables or mathematical expectation or just expected value of random variables. So the previous lecture was devoted to basically definition of this. I will remind it. Um, now I would like to present a couple of examples. Um, it probably would be advisable to listen to this lecture from unizor.com website because there are some notes for this lecture which are very useful to understand uh, the theory behind all this a little bit better because you know it's always easy to read something and listen than just listen right all right so let me remind the end of the previous lecture the definition of um, of the expectation for the random variable let's consider we have um, um, a set of elementary events which can happen as a result of certain random experiment and these elementary events are like this and each of them has certain probability associated with it obviously the sum of these probabilities equal to one and um, with every elementary event there is an associated value of the random variable let's say it's x1 x2 xk these are numbers and uh, the model of this is for instance how much you win if there is certain result of the game so these are results different results of the uh, of the game and these are your winnings um, depending on these results and you get these winnings with these probabilities so this is basically um, the definition of the random uh, random um, variable um, uh, xi which is a function of the elementary event and it's equal to xi so if this is the result of experiment then the value of our uh, random variable is xi now the expectation or mathematical expectation or expected value of uh, our random variable is defined as basically the average value of our random variable per experiment if the number of experiments grows to infinity and uh, we have evaluated it the formula is basically sum of products of the probabilities by values so that's the definition and uh, the derivation of this formula is very simple because if you have n um, uh, experiments then approximately n times pi is the number of times the uh, elementary event EI actually uh, occurs and in which case we have the value XI so you have to just summarize these n times PI times XI summarize by I and divide by n obviously because you want it per average per experiment and that's why we have this formula all right so this is a very quick reminder of the last lecture now the two examples which I would like to present to you uh, and uh, I would like actually to calculate the uh, expected value of certain uh, of certain random variable okay experiment number one is two dice so you are rolling them and you summarize the numbers which are the result of this now what numbers actually are possible uh, and what's their sums actually are right so the numbers are well let's just think about how many different combinations well it's 36 different combinations right because six for six values for one dice 
and six values for another dice. So we have 36 different combinations. Now, um, not every different combination produces a different sum of the numbers, right? For instance, combinations um, 5, 1, uh, 4, 2, 3, 3, uh, 2, 4, and 1, 5 all produce as a result a sum of 6, right? So let me, um, instead of going through all 36, well, I mean, I can actually go through all the 36. That probably would be easier and more understandable. So we will have a, a table, if you wish. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the first dice, this is the second dice, and on the crossing I will put the sum of them, right? So sum of one plus one is two. Here three, four, five, six, and seven. One plus six. Here one plus two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So sum of two numbers can be from 2 to 12 and um, what we actually have to do is each uh, square in this table represents uh, a particular random experiment and this is the result of the first and this is the result of the second uh, dice. Now, so each square has a probability of 136, right? So there are 36 square, 6 by 6. Each combination of two dice has exactly the same chances to occur as any other combination. So what I have to do is, I have to add 2 times 136 plus 3 times 136 plus 4, etc., etc., etc. Or, if you wish, I can group together all 3s, all 4s, all 5s, etc. And what will I get? just easier to calculate it this way instead of because there are these are repetitive items now two I have only in one case so it's two thirty six now three I have in two times so it's two times three divided by thirty six four I have three times five I have four times Six, I have five times. Seven, I have six times. Eight, I have five times. Nine, I have four times. Uh, 10 times 3, 2 times 11, and 1 is 12. Okay. 1 times 2. Okay. So, that's basically the result of accumulation of uh, products of the probabilities and values. So my random variable um, takes, for instance, the value of number 4, 3 out of 36 times, so its probability is 3 times, 3 divided by 36. Uh, sorry, number 4 is 3, 3 divided by 36. Um, the probability to take number 7, for instance, 
E is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 636 times uh, uh, 7. So these, these, these are basically exactly what, what, what I have just counted. The probability of if x1 is 2, then the p1 is 1 12. If p2, uh, x2 is 3, then p2 is 236, etc. And the result of this, by the way, is 7. So the average um, sum of two dice is 7. That's the expectation. Um, again, doesn't mean it always occurs, obviously, but as the number of experiments, number of times we roll two dice, increases to infinity, then the sum of these two dice, two numbers on the top of the dice, uh, per experiment, the averaging per, se per experiment, would tend to be, would, would tend to number seven. So that's basically the whole story is about. So whenever you are throwing two dice, well, on average, you will get the sum equals to seven. Sometimes more, sometimes less, the average would be seven. And again, it's not exact number, that's the number it tends to as the number of experiments goes to infinity. So the more you play, the more your average would be closer to number seven. All right. By the way, in the notes, I presented slightly differently. I presented mo mo more like this particular thing in the table. Okay. Um, next problem. Next problem is about the card game of blackjack. Now, you know that in blackjack, whenever you get a card, it has certain number of points, right? If there is a number on the card from 2 to 10, the number of points is exactly what the number on the card is, from 2 to 10. Then you have jacks, uh, queens, kings, and aces, and uh, each of these also, each of these is also 10 points. So this is the card, this is the points. Each of these is 10. And ace is actually either 1 or 11, depending on what you really want it to be. Now, in my um, particular example, in this particular example, I would like to simplify uh, a little bit the rules, just for this example. I, I, I consider that the value of ace is always 11. It's just easier to calculate. So, we have a random variable being equal to the number of points whenever you pull a card from the deck. Now, let's assume that the card is complete, 52 cards, which means four of each for four different suits. And the, uh, it, it's a complete deck, so I have 52 cards and I'm picking up one, absolutely randomly. Now, the number of points on this card is calculated based on this particular definition. And the question is, what's the average value of the card which I am putting out? What's the expectation of this random variable? Well, it is a random variable. Our um, a set of elementary events is each particular card, and there are 52 different cards, right? And uh, the value of the variable for each card is described as we see it here. Okay. Um, let's go back to our definition of the um, expectation of the, uh, of the random variable as the sum of these products. Okay, what's the k in this case? k is basically a number of different elementary events and it's equal to 52, right? Because we have 52 different cards in the deck. Now, uh, the probability pi's are all equal to uh, 1 52nd, obviously, and xi's are basically calculated based, well, based on the, the, this table. Well, again, we will do a little simplification uh, because many different cards, as you see, have exactly the same value. For instance, the value 2 
um, is assigned to, to four different cards corresponding with the four different suits, right? So same thing was two, three, etc., and ten. Now the jack also has uh, ten, so there are four different jacks in the uh, in the deck of cards. So the number ten is kind of peculiar. Let's put it this way, but others are relatively simple. So what are the values? Values can be from two to ten to eleven, actually. How many cards? With two, we have four cards. With three, we have four cards. With four, we have four cards, corresponding to the four suits, right? Same thing for this, same thing for this, same thing for this, same thing for this, and for this. With ten, slightly different. We have ten, jack, queen, and king. So it's uh, one, two, three, four um, times four different suits, so it's 16. So 16 different cards have, have the value of 10. And again, four different cards, four aces, have the value of 11. So the probabilities are correspondingly for a number two, so this is an X, and this is a probability, I have to actually divide by 52, all of them. Now, if I will multiply the value of the variable times its probability and add them all together according to this formula, right? It's the product of the values and probabilities. Uh, then I will get my expectation. And uh, I have calculated it and it, it came to about 7.3. So expected value of the card which you randomly pick from the from the deck of cards. Expected value is 7.3. By the way, there is a very important difference between these two examples. In the first example, I had seven as an average of sum of two dice. And that is one of the actual values which this sum can take. If, for instance, you have three and four, or five and two, or six and one, etc. Now, in this case, 7.3, this is the value which you will never uh, a a attain by picking the card. There are, there are no cards with this particular value, right? It's just the average, which means that if you will play the same uh, kind of a, a games, pr pr uh, uh, you conduct the same experiment from the full deck of cards, you pick one, and then as the number of experiments goes to infinity, and you are averaging the number of points which you are getting, averaging means down to the single experiment, then you will get the number like this. Well, um, in theory, uh, in, in, well, this is a theory, right? Right now, let's talk about the practice, actually. Uh, blackjack as a game is a little bit more complicated, not only because the ace has uh, your choice of the points, 1 or 11. Also because <coughs> you are not actually picking the cards from uh, the full deck all the time, because there are certain cards which have already been given to other players and to a dealer. So that actually complicates the picture. And uh, I mean, if you know, for instance, all the cards which have been already previously taken from the deck, and you know the, the composition uh, of the deck, because sometimes actually casinos are playing more, with more than one deck of cards, like five or six um, decks of cards, that obviously changes the whole statistics. So this is the simplification of the real thing, and I don't want you to take some kind of a conclusion from this, that for instance, if you have, let's say, two cards already, and they amount to 14 points, if you take one more, if you ask for one more, you will get well an average 21.3, which is above the 21 limit, which which you, you which you can get, which means that in more than one half of the cases you will have the number 
which which will lead you to, to a losing of this particular game. I don't want you to make this conclusion because the conclusion actually is not correct because this is the pure theory in the simplified version. The practices is uh, uh, it, it's completely different and um, it's much more complex actually. But in any case, if for instance you are playing with really large number of decks when the previously taken cards to one or two players actually don't change much um, the probabilities of picking the card for you and if the shuffling is really random etc etc then you might expect that the next card will have an average value of well 7 maybe 7.1 7.2 it depends actually but close to this which means if you have for instance uh, I don't know 16 on your heads on, on your hands and uh, you uh, to to ask for another card would be basically an open invitation to get the number which is above which will lead you to to a losing game because you will have on average more than 21 if you have something like 12 well you definitely might actually expect that you on average it makes sense to to ask for more card somewhere in between like 13 14 15 it all depends on how other um, cards have already been laid off. All right, so this is my second example. And again, just pay attention to, uh, in this particular case especially, that the average val value is not necessarily one of the real values which uh, random variable takes. These are the real values. There is no 7.3 here, right? But an average, yeah, obviously, can be something like this. And, um, uh, just one extra, um, I think, interesting um, comment on this. Um, intuitively, people are thinking that if you have a random variable and you, and you know its average value, its uh, expectation, it really kind of characterizes the, well, uh, the name expectation, right? So it characterizes what to expect when the new random experiment actually is conducted, what to ex expect as the value of this variable. And this is, or at least approximately, this is not actually always the case. Sometimes this um, expectation has absolutely no value at all. And um, let me give you an example, actually. Well, if you, for instance, play a very simple game of... Uh, um, heads and tails, so either you win one or you lose one, depending on what exactly your bet is. Well, the, the, the expectation of this game is zero. I mean, what does it mean? Basically nothing. Uh, even more ridiculous example is, um, well, women have uh, two breasts and, and, and men, they d don't, basically, right? So if you pick a random person from uh, from the crowd uh, with a probability of one half, let's say it's even crowd, with a probability of one half you have a, a woman with two breasts and you have a man with a probability of one half with no breasts. So what does it mean? That the probability, uh, the, the, the expectation uh, of, of the variable, which is number of breasts, is equal to one. So the average person has one breast. Doesn't make any sense at all. So let's not put, you know, a lot of uh, practical value in, in, in this and let's understand the limitations of this particular characteristic of the random variable. It has its limitations but in some cases the expectation, the, the, the average value uh, does make sense and it does characterize um, something which you might expect actually from the future values of, of the random variable. So in this particular case although you don't really know what exactly the card will be. But, well, if you play a lot, then on average you might get something around this value of the next card which you're actually picking from the deck. All right? Okay, that's it. Thanks very much. Uh, I do suggest you to read the same um, uh, lecture, the notes to this lecture on unizor.com. Uh, would be very helpful. That's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.